Well, hello again. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to show you how to hack in a static, overdramatic, hyper saturated, insane atmospheric effect for your 3D maps. Ready? So here's a 2D map, but it's pretty easy to switch this to a 3D. You can do 2.5D, you can do 3D. I'll do 3D. And the first step is to position our globe into a dramatic, not on center view. And I'm doing this by clicking that little middle scroll wheel on my mouse and tilting it so that we get something just majestic. Our planet is so majestic anyway, but when you look at it you like this, you get a sense of the scale that we're working with. Here is a dramatic perspective in 3D. If I look at my ground elevation and go up to the appearance tab, Look at this wonderful option here called vertical exaggeration. This is true to life. Let's crank up the drama here and just go with a 20 times vertical exaggeration. That's bananas. But now we get a real sense for the dramatic topography of Earth. Oh, by the way, I didn't show you one of the things I'm trying to replicate here. Let me show you this. If you do a quick image search for something like detailed Earth, you're just flooded with these luscious 3D uh, pseudo globe creations that are all, you know, copywritten and you have to have a subscription to Shutterstock or Getty to use them. And oh, goodness sakes, they're lovely, but you know, we're map makers. So let's make one of these for ourselves. We have the technology and I'm going to just show you one very small aspect of that, which is adding in your own custom dramatic atmospheric effect here and starry sky. Okay, let's grab a starry sky. Here I am at a lovely resource called Unsplash and I'm going to search for starry. Unsplash is just a beautiful collection of photography provided by people for free, royalty free. They just ask that you credit them. Technically you don't have to, but it, you should credit them. And I'm going to look for something that's a little bit over the top and beautiful and richly saturated. Um, this one from Andy Holmes looks pretty good. Sometimes you have to zoom in and make sure that they're not too blurry. You want them to be pretty crisp. And I like this. Let's use this for our fake 3D space atmosphere. So here we are back in Pro and I've created a new layout. It's just an empty layout. And in this layout, I'm going to insert my 3D map and fill it to the extent of my layout. There it is, looking great with its 20x vertical exaggeration. Now we have a starry sky and a bit of an atmosphere effect here. There are more options that you can explore. Illumination. I opened the properties of the 3D map and now I'm looking at the illumination tab. You can show atmospheric effects. Check this out. It's pretty cool. And if I right click this map and activate it as I navigate around, you know, it, it keeps that the distance of the atmosphere. Um, but we're going to we're going to make our own. So let me exit that and I'll go back into the properties of my 3D map. Turn that off. Uh, I'm going to uncheck stars and halo because that's what we're going to be adding ourselves in this video. And I'll hit OK. Now we just have a. Woo, it's amazing how much more boring and sterile this Earth just became, you know? And that's a testament to how effective this atmospheric and starry sky background effect can be. All right, now let's add in that beautiful starry sky that we just downloaded from Unsplash. I'm going to insert an image into my layout and I'll choose this beautiful starry sky image from Andy Holmes from Unsplash and I'll set the extent to pretty much the entirety of my layout. And it looks like this. Now what's going on? Why didn't it fill my layout? It's because its aspect ratio is constrained, which is pretty helpful. But if I right click this and go into the properties and choose placement option, I can uncheck this aspect ratio lock and then it's happy to stretch for me. Then I just drag this behind my globe. 
just look at the wonder and glory of this new bright image. If I want to reposition this so I'm seeing a little bit more of the bright, more saturated parts, it's just a matter of moving this picture up till you get a part of the starry sky scene that looks good to you. And don't worry about this stuff that's living outside of your layout because when you export your layout as an image, a static image, this is all clipped out. And I'm seeing some really nice star action. So I'm gonna lock this and now I'll zoom out a little bit. And I'm doing that by right clicking my mouse and just smoothly pushing the mouse forward or uh, back and forward. It's a way of really finely navigating your layout. Isn't that nice? It's a good trick. Took me too long to realize that. And also if I depress my scroll wheel, I can drag my layout wherever I want it to go. Okay, now it's time for the atmosphere, ready? This is the fun stuff, this is why you're here. I'm gonna zoom way out and insert an ellipse. So now we have this ellipse with a, a, just a boring black stroke. But we can change that by right-clicking the ellipse and going into the properties. And I'll choose symbol. Now we can style this up just like we can a feature in ArcGIS Pro. It's just another polygon pretty much. And I'll go into the layers and I don't need a fill. I'll just uncheck this. Now instead of this solid one pixel black stroke, I'm going to choose gradient stroke and I'll make it big you know let's let's give it 100 points and see what we've got by default it'll be black to white i'll hit apply now when i give it a hundred point stroke it renders centered over the line what i want to do is make this outside of the line so what i need to do is give it an offset of half of its thickness and when i do that it pushes it outside of the line so this is the geometry of my ellipse my line is drawing outside of the geometry of my ellipse. Now let's play with this color, okay? For the beginning of the atmosphere, I'll just choose this lightest blue option because it's conveniently available for me right there in the drop list. And for the edge of my horizon, I'm going to choose a somewhat dark purple. And we're, uh, we're employing everything we learned from our remote sensing classes about the way light scatters. And for that purple, I'm gonna make it fully transparent. So it's a fully transparent purple to fully opaque light blue. And we'll see what this looks like. Pretty neat, right? Dramatic. And now we can improve this a little bit because at the edge here, we get in real life a really dramatic envelope of breathable haze blanketing our earth. That's the stuff we live in. That's the stuff we breathe. So I'm gonna open this color scheme properties. I'm gonna give myself a little bit more room here with this gradient and I'm gonna make this very end of the gradient white. So I've got fully transparent purple to fully opaque light blue to fully opaque white there right at the edge and I'll hit OK. Apply. And you can see it just gives it boom a lot more realism. Surprising how much of an impact that makes. Now I need to do the same thing for the inner part of the earth. This is where the magic really starts happening. So let me zoom in a little bit. Now in the symbology panel, I'll look at the structure here and I want to just, I'll get rid of that fill. I want to duplicate this stroke layer. So now I have two of them and I'll go back into the layers tab and start controlling this. So this is just stacked up on top of the other one right now, but I want to make it thicker and I want to reverse the offset so it renders inside. So I'm going to make this uh, for the sake of demonstration, pretty huge, so 300. And the offset is gonna be half of that, but I'm gonna give it a negative offset so it renders on top of the earth. It renders inside the ellipse. So a negative offset. Now I have to flip the gradient so that, well, I'll show you what it looks like right now. Okay, now I need to flip this gradient. And we have an atmospheric effect. Pretty over the top, but 
you know, you only live once. Let me unlock our map frame. I'll right click our map frame, activate it. Now you can navigate till you find a view that looks excellent. Let's, um, this uh, dramatic landscape here. And there you go. That's how you add your own insanely dramatized atmospheric effect with your own stock image starry sky in the background. And let me show you something. Let's say you navigate uh, a little, you want to zoom in a little bit. When I do something like that, I lose, I'll leave this navigation mode. I'll turn this off for a second. The arc of my horizon no longer matches the arc of the ellipse that I've drawn. That's fine. Just zoom out and make your ellipse wider. And I'm going to export this and show you what it looks like. It's so much fun. I hope you give it a try. And if you're like me and you just can't help yourself, you can start adding some more things. I'm going to add a rectangle and give it a linear gradient to give this half a sort of shaded feel and this half a bit of a sun-drenched appearance. But why stop there? Why not add a little circular reflective gradient here and maybe a little uh, cool lens flare illumination sprite up at the horizon? Okay, fine. What delectable stock photo detailed earth graphic would be complete without some pretty extreme hill shading? Let's pull in some elevation data from Living Atlas and apply some hill shading with the raster functions.
Have fun. Give your 3D maps a bonkers over the top atmospheric effect. Make your maps something that look real and tangible and playful. Enjoy.